Hi, it's Katrina! The Titanic sunk over a century ago, but the widespread fascination with the famed shipwreck is as strong as ever. From new discoveries to real events from the movie, here are 8 things you probably didn't know about the Titanic. Number 8. Can we recover it? Would it be possible for us to bring up the Titanic and maybe even restore it? Turns out, the answer is no. Bringing the Titanic out of the water would be too expensive and complicated. It is too decayed to be able to save. Most conventional recovery methods, like attaching cables to the vessel, would not effectively raise it from the bottom of the ocean because it would just fall apart and probably turn to dust. Writer Helga Faustkanger reports that much of the Titanic was too badly damaged on its way to the sea floor when it broke apart and sunk, including the detached stern that imploded upon impact and made such a loud noise survivors on the surface could hear the crash on the bottom of the ocean. The decks pancaked on top of one another. Faustkanger asks, Seriously? How would you raise this junk pile? Where would you even attach the cables to lift it? The deterioration that has been occurring before our eyes since the wreck was discovered in 1985 has only further diminished any realistic prospect of salvaging the ship. Doing so would cost more than most people or organizations are willing or able to invest. Safely extracting the Titanic from the water would require spending exorbitant amounts of money on the delicate and complicated procedures, materials, and labor the process would require. Number 7. It Could Disappear Soon What's left of the Titanic may vanish by the year 2030, courtesy of bacteria that live along the ocean floor, writer Natalie Keegan reported in a 2016 article for The Sun. For 107 years, since 1912, the wreck has sat nearly two and a half miles beneath the surface of the frigid North Atlantic Ocean. Due to its depth, the vessel remained relatively well preserved until its discovery in 1985. In 2010, scientists discovered a new type of proteobacteria on rusticles discovered from the wreckage. They called the specimen Halomonas titanicae and believe it may ultimately be responsible for the Titanic's disappearance. The bacteria survive easily at the shipwreck's depth due to the water salinity content, and along with damage caused by deep sea currents and salt erosion, are causing the rapid decay observed by scientists over the last 30 years. Experts knew the Titanic's remains would eventually vanish, but they didn't think it would happen this soon. In August, divers visited the wreck for the first time in 14 years and captured high-definition footage confirming its advanced and ever-worsening state of deterioration. Number 6. Items from the wreck are increasing in value Items from the Titanic are selling at higher prices than ever before as people realize the value of what's left of the disappearing vessel and its contents. In late 2016, a small rusty locker key recovered from the body of third-class steward Sidney Sedunary shortly after the sinking sold at auction for over $110,000. While it may seem sinister, many items sold in recent years were passed down through the families of the original owners until they went to auction. Sedunary's locker key was sent to his widow and remained in the family until it was sold three years ago. In October, the descendants of Samuel Smith, a crew member aboard the SS Minia, the ship that recovered bodies after the sinking, cashed in on some of his ancestors' personal items, including an oak cross he made from shipwreck wood in memory of the 1,500 lives lost. They also sold documents, photographs, woodworking tools, and a letter of provenance that once belonged to Mr. Smith. Number 5. You Can Eat Like a Titanic Passenger in October, the Chicago Tribune announced the debut of a book containing recipes from the Titanic voyage. The Titanic was famous for its exquisite first-class meals of 10 or more courses, prepared with top-of-the-line cooking equipment that rivaled what was being used in the most luxurious French restaurants at the time. Drinks were equally fancy, with bartenders trained in mixology making the era's trendiest cocktails, and over 1,000 bottles of wine, 850 bottles of spirits, and 20,000 bottles of beer on board. In The Last Night on the Titanic, Unsinkable Drinking, Dining, and Style, author Veronica Hink recreates the food and drink experience of the ship's final night above the ocean surface. The book contains recipes for the last meal and beverages consumed aboard the ill-fated vessel, including filet mignon, poached salmon, chicken lyonnaise, foie gras, roast squab with cress, lamb with mint sauce, roasted pigeon, and consomme olga, a soup made from veal stock and flavored with sturgeon marrow, as well as punch romaine, a semi-frozen orange-flavored dessert drenched with champagne. 
Hank's fascination with the Titanic's history stems from the legend of a man nicknamed Popcorn Dan, a local popcorn vendor and one-armed survivor who lived in her hometown of Merrill, Wisconsin. She researched her new book by examining every menu and piece of information she could find about what people ate and drank aboard the Titanic, including letters people wrote that included details about their dining experiences. Along with recipes, Hink's book includes the stories behind the menu items. If the meals enjoyed by Titanic passengers don't appeal to you or sound difficult to make, you may be happy to learn that the book's recipes were altered to be user-friendly and conform to modern tastes. Nothing too weird or hard to get. Titanic enthusiasts in Connecticut have already made plans to don their finest formal wear and step back in time for an evening with an era-appropriate dinner party based on the recipes in Hink's book. What do you think? Are you going? Number 4. Never Before Seen Photographs the recently opened Father Brown Bar at Low Esk Castle Hotel in Donegal, Ireland features 200 rare photographs of the Titanic as part of its decor. Turns out these pictures are very special. Located in Northern Ireland, the bar displays pictures taken by an Irish Jesuit priest and skilled photographer named Francis Brown. His ticket aboard the Titanic's maiden voyage was a gift from his uncle. Brown took hundreds of photographs during his first days on the ship as it traveled from Southampton, England to Queenstown, Ireland. Ireland. He captured images of passengers, staff, and the vessel's grand spaces and cabins. The man received a telegraph from his church superiors ordering him to get off the Titanic right before it set sail across the Atlantic. Little did Brown know these instructions were potentially life-saving, however unintentional. After the ship sank, the last photographs Brown took of it made the front pages of newspapers around the world. Most of the pictures in the Father Brown bar were never seen prior to their recent debut, however. Although Brown made a career out of his photography, he couldn't afford to develop all of his film. A few years ago, the castle's current owner purchased several of Brown's trunks at auction and discovered undeveloped rolls of film inside. The large collection of pictures were processed and remastered, and their current owner was kind enough to share them with the public by decorating his bar with some of them. Should definitely visit this bar if you are in the area. Number 3. Furniture from Titanic Wood 2019 seems to be a busy year for the airing of Titanic secrets. In September, Fox News writer Christopher Carbone reported the sale of a house in Northern Ireland with a unique connection to the Titanic. The four-bedroom home is located near Belfast and was built in 1833. Its kitchen window seat was reportedly made from wood used to construct the Titanic. A man who worked in a local salvage yard told the home's current owner that the wood came from the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast, where the Titanic was built. The carefully restored house, which is listed at an asking price of $548,891, also has historical value because it once served as a post office. Number 2 characters were mostly historically accurate. As you probably know, the main characters of the Titanic movie, Jack and Rose, were fictional. Director James Cameron created them as a way to emotionally connect the audience to the historical storyline. The love triangle between Jack, Rose, and Cal Hockley was also made up, and so was Cal's character, who was loosely based on the real-life son of a Pittsburgh steel tycoon. However, most of the supporting roles in the 1997 blockbuster film were historically accurate. The ship's chief designer, Thomas Andrews, is depicted in the movie as staring at a painting of the Titanic in a smoking room before he died. By all accounts, this portrayal is spot on. The real-life unsinkable Molly Brown helped people board lifeboats before the sinking, just like she did in the film. She also reportedly convinced a rescue boat to turn around and look for more survivors. Much like in the movie, Molly Brown was new money. She came from an impoverished background and her husband was self-made. By all accounts, she was also as down-to-earth in real life as she is in the film. In addition to being a socialite, Brown was a well-known philanthropist and activist who gave back some of her fortune. Millionaire businessman John Jacob Astor IV also really existed and was supposedly also portrayed in an accurate light in the movie. Oh, and that elderly couple who lay in bed together and held hands while awaiting their fate in one of the film's most heart-wrenching moments? That also really happened. Number 1. Class Differences Based on Theory don't get me wrong, class disparity was an obvious reality aboard the Titanic and on most forms of transportation at the time. The upscale first-class accommodations, which were often purchased with disposable wealth, contrasted starkly with the bare-bones, cramped third class, where complete strangers spent their life savings to share basic rooms furnished with bunk beds. 
There were also lines on the ship that couldn't be crossed. For example, third class passengers were absolutely banned from entering first class designated areas. But some scenes of class discrimination in the film are questionable. For example, the scene where a staff member closes a gate to prevent third class passengers from escaping the sinking ship is not based on any confirmed historical knowledge. Such gates existed mainly to prevent diseases from spreading to the ship's upper levels, not to cruelly barricade lower class people during an emergency. Could it have happened? It's possible, I guess, but no evidence points towards it. Class tensions in the film were exaggerated in other ways, including a scene where someone shoots lower-class passengers trying to keep their precious luggage. It's common for directors to bend the truth by crafting scenes dramatically rather than sticking to the historical narrative verbatim. The scenes need to convey the fear and panic that people felt at the time. Did you like the movie? Let me know in the comments below! Thanks for watching! Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon! Bye!